I'm your host, Tyler Rasmussen, and we've partnered up with our friends at Pool Pro Magazine to bring you a monthly news and notes segment on all things pool related. Knowledge is power, and by tuning in each month, you will stay informed on what the public and the industry are talking about. Joining us for these segments is Pool Pro Magazine's editor-in-chief, Megan Kendrick. With over 10 years' experience writing some of the best articles in the industry, we believe she is the perfect person to notify you on what's going on in the pool world that we know and love so much. Without further ado, let's jump into this month's News and Notes episode. Welcome to your go-to podcast for the pool and spa industry. My name is Tyler Rasmussen. And my name is Greg Diafania. And this is the Pool Chasers Podcast. All right, Will, we're back for September's News and Notes episode. How are you doing, Megan? I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> yeah, after your I mean, hour I could long... go into a lot of detail that no one cares about, <laughs> like my kids not sleeping and the website not working and all those things. But those are details that are just really boring to hear someone complain about. So I'm going to try to keep it to myself. <laughs> yeah, we all have uh, these life issues that kind of, you know, pop up every once in a while you're like yep let me do it that then go back to business then do it that go back to business it's a life of an entrepreneur right what do you mean every once in a while don't you mean like every hour all day <laughs> isn't that what you just do all day every day that's what it feels like right <laughs> all right well let's jump into the news segment here so these are again are the stories that are kind of in the public eye why they're important, I feel like, is it's stories that they're hearing out there that they're seeing in the news, things like that, that allow you to kind of have a conversational piece with your customers or just so you're aware in case they bring it up, you can kind of talk about it with them. So let's start out with kind of the last news and notes episode. We told you about the Champlain Towers in Surfside, Florida collapsing on the episode webpage and show notes, we're going to put a link to a story by Washington Post that uses a simulation to show what they think happened. Definitely recommend watching it because it's a pretty fascinating story and kind of layout of that. Yeah, And I should also say, on, sorry, Tyler, I should say that I, the Washington Post, I think, has done the best reporting on this out of anybody. They've done some really in-depth stuff. And so I think for people in the industry, as we're trying to figure out, like, what is the culpability of this potential swimming pool of being, you know, one of the reasons why this mm -hmm. accident happened, um, they're just a really great resource. Yeah, it's a long story, a long simulation, but it's super cool to kind of see it play out visually. Um, also, on last month's episode, we discussed a Six Flags incident where the park closed due to a chemical leak. It's now been discovered that the leak was caused by an improper installation of a water filtration system. So you can read that article. Um, an article in Dwell Magazine shares a new trend of swimming pools being built out of old shipping containers. So I know I've seen this around a little bit, but the company is called Mod Pools and was started in 2017. To date, they have shipped over 850 pools to clients in North America, and they've been on Property Brothers on Tiny Homes. So you got to check those out for sure. Um, MCR Hotels, which is the U.S. fourth largest hotel owner operator, has added charges for amenities and services at about 12 of its independent hotels. The swimming pool will now cost $25 to use over the weekend, but it's free during the week. In return, they've dropped rates in, you know, because not every guest wants every product. That's really interesting. Yeah, I want to talk about that one after I get through these because I like that one. The NFL season is about to start soon, and we have a pool story connected to one of its stars. So Ezekiel Elliott, who's a running back for the Dallas Cowboys, was sued for his dogs allegedly biting the pool cleaner. Apparently, it's not the first time the dogs have gotten in trouble, but I really hope that the pool cleaner is okay. In Virginia Beach, a couple won a $25,000 judgment against a swimming pool contractor who promised them a pool but did not deliver. The couple is one of 10 artistic pools customers that were found to be unsatisfied with that pool they were promised by the original investigation. Um, in Bernie, California, a semi-truck carrying pool chemicals crashed into a U.S. bank building. The driver suffered major injuries, but luckily no one else was hurt and none of the chemicals spilled. <laughs> that could have uh, yeah, really I can't been believe a big that problem, that but spilled. let's hope that's, that yeah, driver that's is crazy. okay. And yeah, hopefully he's okay now, but... I know. It would have been a much yeah, larger that's, story. that's insane. <laughs> yeah. Much larger story. Yep. In Washington, D.C., the... D.C. Fire honored a swimming pool lifeguard who saved a 90-year-old woman from drowning back in July at her community pool. 
And in Walnut Creek, California, a police officer saved an elderly man who drove into a pool. So more people driving into pools. But are we going to cover that every single I mean, episode? Is I somebody mean, maybe. Like the newest person who drove into a pool? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you, you think certain... it's that common, but it's like, yeah, every every month it seems like there's a new one floating around. Yeah, yeah, this one's a little bit different because like he actually almost drowned, and the officer caught him and, and you know and saved him, which is really cool. Oh. A lot of times you don't really hear that part of it; it's just see the pool in the water. But right. Um. Last but not least, see the pool. See the pool in the water. Yeah, that didn't make sense, huh? See the. <laughs> You just, I mean, you can see that too, but you see the car or vehicle in the water. <laughs> gotcha. I wasn't going to let that one go. It's all good. <laughs> and to be serious, last but not least, there were over 10 stories of drownings that I've read about this month. And, you know, our thoughts and prayers go out to those families. And just a reminder to the pool pros that, you know, we have a responsibility. It's very important for us to do our part in kind of promoting water safety to our clients, like in any way that we can. I have some of the Collins Hope Water Warrior tags hanging just right in front of me. And I, I take those whenever I have a friend who buys a house with a pool, I give them to him. If we uh, go over to a pool party, I usually bring them. People think I'm insane. Um, but, you know, we hear all of these stories working in the industry and it's it's really important to never forget to be vigilant yeah they think you're insane because it hasn't happened to them but if it happened to them Mm -hmm. they would be thanking you you know a million times over so it's a big deal um we talk about it a lot and you know it's it's a really sad thing but we can do our part so just try to bring awareness to your customers but i want to get back to that mcr hotels charging for amenities because i think what that really shows and i thought that was very interesting because we had this chemical issue, you know, trying to get chemicals and we've also had parts issues trying to get those. So for me, like what that shows is the public is paying attention to that and it's being hit by that. Um, you probably don't think about that very often because a lot of us run these, you know, smaller businesses that are more residential, but, but now that a hotel is taking a statement and, and doing that, that's, that's a big deal to me because they're realizing that more people will swim in the pool over the weekend. So they're going to be charging for that. So people who want to use the pool also like not everybody wants to use the pool, which I think is cool. Cause I don't use the pool, you know, most probably pool people don't use the pool at those pools, <laughs> but you don't have to pay for it. And the rates are cheaper. Yeah. You know, I forgot like how, um, how wonderful kids think a hotel pool is until recently, you know, cause you like when you're a kid, you want to, and you stay at a hotel, you want to swim in the pool and your parents are like, yeah. And then you're, right. you know, you have your own, and then you, then you don't swim in a hotel pool for the next like 15 years. And then you have mm-hmm. a kid and suddenly it's like, Oh, right. People actually use these. That's why that water looks that way. <laughs> and trying right. to keep I'll, them out I mean, of there is not, is not an option. So, uh, so yeah, it's, that's pretty interesting that they're charging for it. Yeah. It's a, the public's paying attention to it. And I think that's a smart business owner. I mean, he's, he's making adjustments as times are changing and realizes that the pool is costing him money. Yeah. I mean, even the fact that he realized that is a big deal to me as a business owner, like, Oh, like we're actually losing a ton of money in this area. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and probably his, whoever his pool service company, whoever it is, is probably charging higher rates, which is a good thing too. Yeah, for sure. Let's hope. Right. (laughs) Well, let's move on from there to, into the pool industry news. (laughs) All right. So we have a few um, big things to discuss. Like, Kind of tying into what we talked about last time, where we talked about all of the companies in the swimming pool industry that are now have gone public. So, you know, right before that episode came out, everyone started um, putting out their second quarter earnings. And look, I'm not, I know, I do not know about the stock market. I am not an expert in studying these things, but I do think it's interesting to look at the numbers because it does give you an idea of where the industry is at and what sales are looking like and how much we're up as an industry and everybody is up. (laughs) Um, Yeah. (laughs) And so so. I'm going to throw out some numbers, but these are not, this is not like comparing apples to apples. Like some of these are, you know, net income and some of these are net sales. And, you know, some of these are increases from quarter to quarter and some of them are year to year. And so I don't want you to look at this and compare these companies as a whole to each other based on what I'm about to say, but just just listen to these numbers and how much people are up and how well they're doing right now. So 
uh, Pool Corp, its 2022 Q2 earnings, its operating income was up 64% from Q2 2020. Hayward's net income increased 182% year over year. Uh, Pentair's profit rose 44% from the same period a year ago. Latham's net sales were up 60.3% year over year. Fluidra's sales were up 53.9% year over year. And Leslie's sales increased of 52.3% from the prior year's quarter. So again, there's, this is not apples to apples, but um, those are significant increases. And so I think it just shows you again, like how much things are are booming right now. Yeah, they're very significant. I mean, those are huge. I mean, I would think if they got up 10% from last year, you know, in previous times it would be a really good thing, right? And you're talking like 64%, like that's insane. And what you were mentioning earlier before we started recording, like Pool Corp to me and what you said is like the level of it. they're up 64% because mm -hmm. they're selling everybody's stuff, right? So that kind of really gives you more of a gauge of what the industry itself is really doing and how it's increased. I mean, 64% from last year, whatever the number is pretty insane. Yeah, absolutely. It's interesting because I feel like if you look at Pool Corp's numbers, that gives you a really good gauge of like how the trade is doing. Um, and if you look mm -hmm. at Leslie's numbers, that kind of gives you a, a good sense of what is happening on the consumer market, you know, kind of that aftermarket, after sales DIYers. So yeah, yeah things are good out there right now. Yeah, I think Leslie's uh, sales include tabs to pull guys for sure too right yeah now. absolutely they do yes and especially this year right yeah so there's a lot more there's yeah. a lot more of that and i know leslie's is like getting more into uh you know the commercial side of the business and selling to the trade and all of that yep. so that's about to change but um or is changing but kind of as, a, as in a general rule <laughs> that's how i tend to yeah. look at it yeah for sure <laughs> yeah no absolutely but of course you know we all know that prices are going up um, and so some of those profits are just from an increase in sales. Um, and some of them are because things, um, they're charging more for stuff, but mm -hmm. I ran across this article the other day and I wanted to bring it up in this because, um, according to Reuters, uh, freight has gone up 550% from Ooh. a year ago. Yes. I'm going to, I'm going to read it. Okay. So for, this is from Reuters. Right. <laughs> we'll, we'll link to the article, but it says, the spot price per container on the China-US East Coast route, one of the world's busiest container lanes, has climbed over 500% from a year ago. And this this came out August 5th to $20,804 this week, freight tracking firm Fredo said. That compares wow. to just under 11,000 on July 27th. So it went up by like $9,000 <laughs> in in 8 days yes, or yes. 9 days. <laughs> So, I mean, it's just, that it's, that's insane. And so when we talk about, well, I mean, we look at the price increases and we look at how costs are going up. And this is just something to keep in mind, right? Is that this is what um, the manufacturers are having to deal with right now, where, you know, one day it costs you 10, the next day it costs you 20. And I think, I think typically the prices used to be like a couple thousand dollars. Like we're, we're talking obviously 550%. That's just crazy. And so it's just something to keep in mind as we all deal with the frustration of rising costs and prices and all those things is that it is not just you, the person buying the final product that's getting hit with it, um, you know, and also pass that along to your customer. Yeah, right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's a good good way to use it to raise your rates, right? Right, yeah. Like 550%. Just, you guys go ahead and carry that news article around in your, uh, in your yeah. truck from now on. <laughs> yep. <laughs> No, I think that's that's a good story to know for sure. And it really is relatable to what we discussed last time about just you don't understand the whole story until you kind of go step by step into how they're getting the product to your door, right? It's it's a lot. So It is a lot. Um, there are a couple of um, updates as far as standards and things like that. So the Virginia Graham Baker Act, there are some new updates to that. Um, most of the changes fall on the manufacturers and how they label and things like that. But for pool pros, um, there is a change in how like the pump size to sump depth calculation is used to determine the correct flow rating. I don't really know what that means. I am not an expert in that, but it sounds like you guys are talking to an expert on an upcoming episode so people can get some actual mm -hmm. like real information on that. 
Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, Aquastar's done a great job. You know, Steve Barnes is a legend within the industry, but he's an expert at all this. Um, he's done several different YouTube videos, and we'll link to one in the notes. But um, it can get super technical. I think what we try to do in an episode, which will be out the week following this one coming out, um, which is kind of how it affects the pool industry itself. Um, cause you could get very deep into this. Yeah. And like you said, most of it is on the manufacturers. Um, really what, what the pool industry needs to understand is what does the label say? Is it, you know, is the stamp on there prior to the date of change or is it, you know, after the date of change and really it's, that's just following the instructions. The newer instructions are going to have a ton more information in there. So really it's just yeah. following that to guidelines for the pool industry. I'm glad that you've got some more information coming out on that. Um, and I know that we have all heard kind of ad nauseum about the new Department of Energy pump regulations, but those actually went live July 19th. I think um, all of the manufacturers, all their pump guys took a vacation after that because <laughs> they've been working real hard to get that ready to go. So, um, so yeah, so that happened. Yeah, for sure. As we've right? all heard. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we, we did an yes. episode on that too. It's episode 159. So if you want to hear how that applies, you can go back to that one. Another thing that has come up, you know, we we're talking about safety. The International Swimming Pool Hall of Fame, they got a bill passed in Florida called Every Child a Swimmer, which basically requires schools to provide learn to swim information to parents um, and then the PHTA, their step into swim program has kind of tied into that to make that, try to make that a national thing, which is, which is great as far as safety and getting, you know, more swimmers out there and more people to think about pool safety. So that is an awesome thing. And I don't know if you've ever met mm -hmm. Bill Kent. He's also kind of another industry legend. Um, but mm -hmm. if you should ask him about about getting this bill passed, because um, it was basically just a grassroots effort by him, someone who's never tried to get legislation passed before, and it was very, very interesting. Hmm. Yeah, definitely have to ask him about that. I've seen him at a couple trade shows, I think, here and there. But yeah, I'll definitely do that. Yeah, that was <laughs> it was it's very interesting. Um, if you're a nerd about how things work, like I am. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, and I know that last. I definitely like that. Yeah. I know that last episode, we also talked about um, the PSATC and their apprenticeship program, how it went from being in California to being national. So the PHTA, the Pool and Hot Tub Alliance, has launched their own national apprenticeship program. Um, I don't have a ton of information on that yet since it's, it's new, but that is. Um, an exciting thing for the industry that we've got now, you know, multiple programs to choose from to. Uh, get your people, uh, get your technicians and your people in there to get some more education. So that's obviously a great thing mm -hmm. for the industry. And nope. the very last thing I have is um, IPSA, the Independent Pool and Spa Professionals Association. They have started a new affiliate member option for people. So if you would like to be a member of IPSA and don't have that option because you are too far away from a local chapter, they have an option for you, which would give you all of the benefits that you would get as an IPSA member, their insurance and education and, and things like that. So, um, so if you've been wanting to do something like that and you haven't had the option because it isn't, there isn't one available in your area, now you can. And I know, I know Tyler, you guys are, you know, a big proponent for getting involved and being part of a part of a community. And so there's an option for somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. There's a lot of uh, independent pool guys that are not close to those. So it can be a cool yeah. option for sure. And since I mean, last year, we didn't get to go to any events. Um, all of the industry things were canceled. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. And some of them this year have been canceled as well. And so, but now we're finally starting to get back into that mode again. My like travel schedule is kind of going to be a little out of control coming up here. But uh, the Pool Industry Expo is September 9th through 11th in Monterey. Um, the Some of these are more for, you know, kind of the bigger commercial type things. But the National Rec and Park Association Conference is September 21st to 23rd in Baltimore. Um, the casual market. So if anyone has does retail and sells patio furniture, this is the one place that everybody goes for that. Um, that's September 21st to 24th in Chicago. The World Aquatic Health Conference is in October um, 13th through the 15th in Houston. And then the Athletic Business Show is October 27th and to 30th in San Antonio. So 
those are some upcoming events for you to uh, take advantage of if you're nearby or want to go see some of those. And then obviously those are just the ones in September and October. There obviously are many more coming up in the next, next few months. Yeah, for sure. Charming. Yes. <laughs> And so if you want to look at the people, movers and shakers for this last couple of months, people who have moved on to new jobs. So Erin Brothers, she is now head of HR at Automatic Pool Covers. Um, you know, but no one in the industry is going to really necessarily know who she is, but um, she's won a lot of HR awards. And the thing that I, the reason why I wanted to mention her specifically is that, you know, APC has been doing a lot of hiring lately, bringing on... Um, a bunch of engineers and now um, brothers to lead their their HR department and um, yeah they're just doing a lot of they're just doing a lot of cool things and they're have you ever been to their facility up there in Indianapolis Tyler I have not but it is it's top notch very very impressive and so anyway I just thought it was exciting to see how they've continued to grow uh, and then the last one you know what we didn't do last episode what's that <laughs> talk about the Olympics oh I know <laughs> Fail. I mean, no, swimming is kind of, I know swimming is kind of like the only thing I watch in the Olympics, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, well, I mean, it's not the only thing I try to watch as much of the Olympics as I can, right? Me but too. swimming's a big deal and a big thing for our industry. And we didn't, we didn't even talk about it. I know that's sad, <laughs> but, but yeah. <laughs> Rowdy Gaines, the voice of swimming has joined the PHTA. He does some business development stuff for them. And so I just think that's really cool. I think he does a great job announcing the swimming. He's he's kind of one of those names that you're like, why do I know that guy's name? And it's like, oh, Rowdy Gaines, mm-hmm. the swimming guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's kind of fun that he's part of going to be part of our, um, our side of the industry in a real way going forward. So that was yeah. exciting news to me. Definitely. Very cool. Yeah. Swimming is also one of my favorite things to watch when the swimming's over and you get into like the running it's like not as cool right like <laughs> i know i don't why is that i feel like i like the running's I mean, both, fine but <laughs> and they're both they're both races and, and that's I know, what i, I like know. about it is like there's a clear winner and a you know like there's it's not subjective to whether a judge thought you'd like sure. tuck your chin enough <laughs> right 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 right, right. <laughs> but um but yeah i don't know why the swimming is like more fascinating to me than the uh than the running probably just because we love pools but yeah when like yeah it's, it's always kind of broken down in like two sectors or every night you get for like two weeks you get swimming and then the next two weeks you get running it's like yeah uh, it's not as it's not as cool to me to watch the running <laughs> i know maybe we're just burnt out i think out there's from so the many swimming. qualifying events with running too where it's like is this gonna like is this somebody winning a medal or is it just like <laughs> the fourth is, qualifying match yeah, for sure it's yeah, definitely so, confusing uh, <laughs> i mean i have to say michael phelps is probably the most famous person I've ever interviewed. And so that's always my thing about swimming. And then the Olympics too, is that I like to drop that name drop that I've taught, that I've interviewed Michael Phelps a couple of times. Have you? Several yes. times. More than oh. once, yes. Mm-hmm. That is pretty awesome. I know. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Master Spas, for um, bringing me right? into the industry and facilitating <laughs> that for me. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> All right. Well, let's touch base kind of on the next issue coming out for the magazine. You want to talk about that for a second? Yeah. So when this issue issue, so it, I deal with issues and episodes and I, you know, it's, it get those real it, in my mouth. It, you said it, issue. Yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> you said it right. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I did not because I was going to say when this episode comes out, our new Uh-oh. issue, the September, October issue will have hit, um, SCP or mailboxes, however you find the magazine. And it is our commercial Near you. issue. What? I said near you. Oh, yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, um, this is... We are professionals. Oh. Um, <laughs> anyway, the September, October issue is our commercial edition. We are focusing almost completely solely on the commercial pool service side of the industry. Um, and so that's kind of fun. And the commercial industry is interesting because while... Um, most of the industry has been booming. That was kind of the one side of the industry that, you know, was forced to close in a lot of cases. And so it's just kind of interesting to see how that's differed right. from um, the industry as a whole and um, and what they're, how they're coming out of it and everything. So yeah, I'm really excited for that to uh, land. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. I, I, I love to learn about the commercial stuff because we didn't do much of it. And I just think it's very kind of entertaining to 
to see a different side yeah, of it. So looking forward to that. And we'll definitely highlight a couple articles in the next news and notes episode. Once I get time to read them. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> cool. So can you remind everybody how they can get pool pro magazine? Yes. You can pick up pool pro for free at SCP and superior pool products locations. And you can also uh, purchase a website, purchase a website. Purchase a purchase subscription. A yep. Purchase a subscription on our website <laughs> to have it mailed to your home or office. Now you got that GoDaddy on your mind, huh? <laughs> Remember when I was saying, when you asked me how things were going and I was like, eh, well, that's, that's, <laughs> that's maybe why. Don't try to buy, oh, don't try to buy a subscription today, the, the day that we're, that we're, that we're just recording this because it won't work. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> we'll pull all the links into the show notes and on the episode webpage of all the stories we discussed today. So as always, Megan, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for your time. Thanks for having me on, Tyler. Thank you so much for listening. If you'd like to learn more, you can hit the link in the show notes below or visit poolchasers.com. If you'd like to learn more about Pool Pro Magazine, pick up the latest issue at your local SCP or Superior and visit them at poolpromag.com. See you out there, Pool Chasers.